Sullivan Randy here, and today we're doing another In the Shop with uh, RDL here, Shop of Basics, and this time we're talking about airline connections here. Yes, I know this may seem like a strange one, but again, uh, for those of you who did not watch any of my previous videos on this, I work in uh, manufacturing. I'm a thermal forming technician and CNC programmer, and we have a lot of new people that are always coming through uh, the manufacturing facility, new, new workers, and a lot of these new workers don't know the basics. The basics. Uh, we'll just uh, leave it at that. So one of those basics being is how do you connect and disconnect airline tools? Uh, obviously working in the shop there we have a lot of air power tools. In fact I think pretty much everything we have is air power with the exception of you know cordless drills and that type of thing. And of course often uh, switching out uh, these air tools and a lot of the new people you hand them hey switch this tool to this tool and the person does not know how to disconnect and then connect the other tool. You know, again, for those of you like, well, that's silly. Everybody knows how to do that, right? Well, no, apparently they don't. So that's why we're doing a video on it. Okay, so we'll bring the uh, camera in nice and close here so you can see this, hopefully. And all the uh, connections on these are the same, by the way. As far as I know, it's pretty much standard. I haven't really seen anything that's different, typically. So we'll just uh, pick one here. And uh, the way these work, you simply pull down on this outer ring here. And you can see those detent balls in there. They now can slide out which will allow you to take your air tool, slide it on, and return this, the ring. Uh, should be spring-loaded, but you know, depending on how old it is, sometimes it doesn't always work well. Uh, basically, what that allows that to do again, allows those detent balls in there to push out, allowing it to slip over the ring here. And then, of course, when you return this, it pushes those balls back in and grabs onto it and doesn't let it pop back out. Now, of course, under pressure, you're obviously going to have to push it on. You know, if, if there's no pressure in the line, obviously it's going to, you know, it should be able to slide on a lot easier. In this case, there's pressure on this line. So pull back, push it in, and return the outer ring, if it doesn't return on its own anyway. You now, same thing with the, uh, the air nozzle here. Just like that. Nothing to it. Again, just make sure you, you're going to want to hold this end fairly well. Again, if it's under pressure, if it's not under pressure, it doesn't matter. If it's under pressure, though, you're going to want to hold both ends fairly well here. Push them together. You'll hear it kind of hiss there. And there you go. And, of course, to get it back out, just uh, pull the outer ring. Uh, you're probably going to make sure you hold on to this. Otherwise, I think I will probably demonstrate this here. Yes, it's going to go flying. So you want to make sure you hang on to it if it's under pressure. Uh, probably don't have to worry about this so much. It's not going to go very far. It's heavy. Don't want to drop it on your toes, though. So there we go, folks. Hopefully that uh, demonstrates how to connect and disconnect airlines. Again, like I said, fairly simple. Again, folks, this may seem like a fairly silly topic, but unfortunately where I work, it happens. People do not know how to connect and disconnect airline tools. Again, not their fault. They just probably have not been taught how to do so. Not that it's that hard. You just need to be taught how to do so. So anyway, uh, if folks have any other suggestions for uh, shop basics you'd like to see, let me know. Leave them in the comments below. Also, if you have any other comments or questions, be sure to leave them below as well. And as always, thanks for watching and until next time.